Dana, good morning. Good morning. We have not met before, no. but of course I feel like I know you, and I'm sure everybody says the same thing to you. <laughs> from, yeah, sometimes. From McMurphy on yeah. China Beach, everybody says, feel like I know you. Yeah. Anyway, congratulations on your role in House Sitter. Thank you. That's a funny movie. It is fun, isn't it? I mean, the audience last night was roaring, yeah. nonstop roaring. It's great to see with a big audience because it really is infectious. When you were up for this part, uh, was it something that just clicked immediately, or were you with, uh, considered with a lot of other people, or what did you go through? Um, I actually auditioned for it in New York on my last day of shooting this other movie I was doing, Light Sleeper, which was very dramatic, and then I went that same day to audition with Steve and Frank Oz, and um, it just seemed to work. Um, I think Frank didn't even know who I was. He had never seen China Beach, so he had no idea. And Steve, I knew because I'm friends with his wife, Victoria Tennant. Um, and it was just very natural. And I think Frank wa wanted somebody who was very real. He didn't want to go for the broad comedy. So that's where I came in. <laughs> <laughs> Your character is a rather conservative woman. Yes. And I have the feeling just seeing you on interview shows that you're just 180 degrees <laughs> from that, yes. right? Well, you know, I think part of it was because Frank didn't know me, and from the outside, I look very straight, you know, an all-American. So that's what people's initial reaction is of me, and then they get to know me, and they're shocked. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this wild and crazy right. <laughs> woman? <laughs> Goldie's character, of course, it can just invent the most outrageous stories. Yeah. And you have to just be, you know, take it all in. You're the straight person. Right. In real life, have you ever invented any outrageous story for whatever reason? Uh, I think I used to do it when I was in high school to see what I could get away with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes in New York, I remember uh, I'd be in cabs and I'd make up something to the cab driver. Or I'd be on my way to an audition and I wanted to be the character, so I'd act like the character, you know, to keep, get, keep me in and on the way to the audition. Would you ever? misrepresent something, fudge a little on the facts when you were being asked questions like, you know, do you scuba dive or can you ride a horse or any of that to get a role? Um, people used to suggest that, but I have to say I never did because I knew I would be caught in it and I'd be in trouble. I don't think that's a good idea. I really don't. My mother always told me honesty is the best policy and I believe it. <laughs> so you didn't have to fudge anything for, to get this role? No. Mm -mm. No, I, I came in dressed kind of straight. That was it. Working in scenes with Steve and Goldie, and you're, you know, the one they kind of play off. Right. Is, is that a difficult situation to be in? Well, it's hard to keep a straight face. I mean, that's hard. Um, not really, because they're both so amusing, and they have such great timing that you just try to f fall into, you know, their kind of world that they've created. That was pretty much my job. Tell me about filming the love scene with Steve <laughs> in the fireplace. That was entirely Steve's idea. Um, we were setting up the scene and talking about what to do and Steve said, uh, what if we ended up in the fireplace? And Frank and I looked at him and went, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, I mean, I thought, no way. <laughs> no, that's, why would we end up in the fireplace? <laughs> And we actually shot in this woman's home. It was a real home, and who was very much like my character. And so that was all of her things that we were, you know, around. And it was a very nice little straight home. And um, he started doing it, and I just sort of went along with it. And then that's what happened. I had no idea what he was going to do. He just, you know, he's such a genius about just following his instincts that I, my job was just to, to react to whatever he was doing. It was great. And you did it well. <laughs> it was fun. It really was. Although, I got to say, I had no idea what he was doing. I mean, I really felt like I was with a 14-year-old boy. It's, I felt, I, I said to Frank, I said, do men still act this way? I said, I haven't acted like this since I was 14. He said, <laughs> <laughs> reality. Yeah. <laughs> you were on the Johnny Carson show how many times? Three times. What is your favorite quick recollection of being on the Carson show? Oh, gosh. Um, my favorite, I really like Johnny a lot. He's so good at what he does. And uh, 
you know, he really makes you feel comfortable, which is a real talent to do that. But I remember, you know, at the end when he, he, he walks over and he kisses the guests, you know, and he shakes hands, and people are always wondering, you know, what are they really saying to each other? And he leaned over at one point and uh, whispered in my ear and said, that dress was a great buy. And I had this really skin-tight dress on, and he was very admiring of it. He really likes women, which is nice. Yeah, you could tell there was a chemistry that he, you and he really clicked. Yeah, he, he's, he's, yeah, he's like <laughs> the type of guy I like. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> Dana, again, congratulations on your role in House Sitter, and I think you guys have a hit. I don't think Thank you, you need to worry about that. I hope you're right. And I hope I see you again one of these times. Thanks. Thank you.